Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel back. This is the uh, Zero Cell, I'm going to call it now. Zoofer was kind of corny anyway. Uh, I'm about getting ready to dismantle this cell and rebuild it in a more permanent fashion. I um, decided to go with six neutral plates, 1.97 volts per cell, and at that at that s with this spacing of 90 thousandths of an inch at a electrolyte concentration of 50 grams or I'm sorry 56 grams of sodium hydroxide to one and a half liters of water I'm getting between 10 and 15 amps of current with these with these plates I'm going to be capping off the top and uh, perhaps even closing up the spacing a little bit more in the next version of this cell. But before I do that, I wanted to show you what the cell taught me the other day, in fact this past weekend. The cell taught me that um, in a series cell design you must take every measure possible to insulate each plate from one another to prevent leakage from passing through the electrolyte across to other plates. What had happened was in the very middle I was getting a very large amount of production when the electrolyte solution was at a point just below the top edge of the plates. I mean about a sixteenth of an inch. As soon as I turned the electrolyzer on the convection current flowing up through the column was so strong it literally buried the uh, tops of the plates a quarter of an inch deep in electrolyte because the flow was so strong coming up over the top. By doing that, it created a short circuit across the top of the series cell, and most of the production was just around, centered around the very, very center. So all I did was lower the solution to about, oh, about there, okay? About one sixteenth of an inch above the edge of the sidewall of the, of the acrylic column. And when I turned the switch on, the, volt, uh, the, the fluid f uh, flowing up through the column pushed it up to about this point, in this in between the cells but did not cover the top of the cells and by doing that it almost doubled the production and doubled the efficiency of the cell I want to give you an idea how fast the the uh, electrolyte flows up through this column um, when I when I apply voltage now this cell has been warmed up it just came out of my car it's still warm from the trip home it's gonna draw about 10 amps when I flip the switch on check this out switch is on and there goes the flow now you see there's still a little bit more concentration towards the center when I turned it on. I'll let it drop down again. And everything settles back down. All right, one more time. Rises almost like the controls of a graphic equalizer. Uh, there's a small small dip in the middle on either side almost like a, a suspension bridge if you will so it's tallest in the middle droops a little towards the center and gets tallest again towards the outside but when the cell is in full production you'll notice that it is pretty even across the top right now because the flow coming up through each of the plates is about the same and it is reaching the top of the plates but it is not submerging the top so it's not pr pr producing a short circuit so I'm getting a nice even uh, distribution across all of the plates in this series cell for gas production. Uh, I took a measurement earlier and I produced uh, 520 milliliters in 84 seconds at 8.9 amps I think, 13 and a half volts. It was 120 watts which gave me about 3.1 milliliters per minute per watt. That is just under 50 percent efficient by uh, Faraday. So it's not as good as it could be. That's why I'm going to pull the cell apart and rebuild it. I'm going to refinish the plates because I've, I've been through three reconfigurations now of, the, of this cell without actually changing and cleaning the plates. And I think that's going to uh, greatly enhance the efficiency of this cell. When I'm finished, I'm also going to put a, a, um, an acrylic cap right across the top of the plates just as there is a cap across the bottom of the plates in an earlier video in this series. What that will do is it's going to allow me to, to completely submerge the cell and still not create the short circuit condition that I dread so very much. Um, 
the other benefit of that is by sub by being able to submerge the whole thing I don't have to worry about maintaining such a critical level of electrolyte in order to make the cell work efficiently right now freestanding in the in the uh, canister that it's sitting in now in the tank that it's sitting in now this level has to be just about level with the edge of the column at all times so as I'm driving around in the car it's sloshing around a little bit you know it doesn't it doesn't really doesn't really maintain that nice that nice level condition that that you want to have to get the maximum efficiency all the time uh, I guess that's about it I just wanted to show you that uh, that effect of the uh, of the fluid pushing up through the column and how fast it really goes this is a, a fairly efficient cell I'm very pleased with the with the overall progress uh, it's it's going to be a little while before I produce another video. And incidentally, the next set of videos you will find at livevideo.com. This entire video series, this one and the permanent magnet motor series, will both be found at, at livevideo.com forward slash zero fossil fuel. Uh, YouTube will be finding me on another label. Sorry, guys. I'm out of here. That's it for now. Zero Fossil Fuel signing out. Everyone have fun. Please take care with your HHO.